What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k. So unfortunately I've got some bad news, and that's that GW and Forge World are going to be discontinuing beloved Warhammer 40k figurines. And these minis, these sculpts, these models, unfortunately, most of them come from that of the Space Marines, and we are losing a chapter master of an ambiguous, I guess you could call it that, <laughs> a Space Marine chapter, and that is of the Minotaurs. So we have Asterian Moloch that is going away, but just because he's being discontinued, that might not be the end for this guy. This guy may be coming out with a new sculpt in the recent months to come, maybe years to come, but just because something is discontinued, that generally means that GW has some plans for them in the future, or maybe they're shelving it for a later release. But with that being said, I used to play Minotaurs a long, long time ago, back when I first decided that I wanted to play Space Marines instead of just focusing on the Tau Empire. The Minotaurs caught my attention, because the lore around Asterion Moloch is pretty mysterious. So first and foremost, the Minotaurs specialize in fighting against other Space Marines. They are still considered loyalist space marines because they do follow the orders of the High Lords of Terra. So they're essentially the attack dogs of the High Lords. And if any other space marine chapter is deemed to be not following the Imperium, boom, guess who gets sent to take them on? And that is none other than the Minotaurs. The Minotaurs have this theme of like Spartan soldiers. And you can see that with their chapter master, Moloch. He's got a shield and spear combo. He's got the crested helm. And of course, they've got the Minotaur as their symbol and chapter. Now, the lore about this guy is mysterious because he's been alive for hundreds of thousands of years. This guy has been fighting in different war zones. And even when this guy seems to have died or has taken mortal wounds, he comes back again to just keep on fighting. So what's the deal here? Is this guy actually immortal? Is this guy like a machine or an automatron that just keeps on coming, kind of like the Terminator? Or is Asterion Moloch just a title being passed down from chapter master to chapter master after every death? Regardless on what you think it is, this guy is a force to be reckoned with. So much so that even Custodes and Sisters of Silence quake in their boots on his presence. So here is an excerpt from a novel that shows just that. Watchers of the Throne, The Regent's Shadow by Chris Waite has some pretty awesome lore here. And it's not a battle, like we don't get to see Assyrian Moloch fighting and like decimating his enemies. It's more of just his essence. You'll get the idea once I get into these excerpt. So with that being said guys, let's jump right in. Here they come, signed Aleia, knowing full well that this was no lasting respite. The ranks of the Militarum troops parted, and the Minotaurs made their way to the forefront. There were 30 of them no doubt more making their way from positions further down the long aisles. They carried themselves like executioners, stalking deliberately, bolters trained on us, power weapons crackling. Once they were in position, just a few meters from the first steps up to the podium, they too halted. They formed up in two lines, spread out before us, leaving a gap between to allow their master to emerge. Moloch wore his Tartarus armor, as ever the bronze of it near black, its ornate surface engraved with runes and esoteric patterns. His footfalls were purposefully heavy, sending spiderwebs of cracks across the damaged stone. He carried a power spear of a similar pattern to ours, though it was darker and older than any I had borne. His red cloak hung like molten lead across his angular shoulders and he carried a circular shield with symbols engraved on it that one could not decipher. I watched him approach, trying to ascertain some weakness, some flaw that I could use against him. I detected nothing. He may as well have been an automatron, a battle creation forged in some dark and forgotten laboratory and sent into the world of the living. Who could have halted such a monster? Valorous in all probability? Gilliman, without a doubt. 
Beyond that, and as for myself, I felt no certainty. I had no idea who he answered to. And now that Hamo Talion was dead, was he acting on some standing command? For himself? I took a step forward, moving between Moloch and Fadix, angling the tip of my spear towards the oncoming chapter master. No further, I commanded, gripping the stave tight with both hands. Moloch always wore his mask. I had never seen him without it, and I picked up nothing behind that metallic visage. Nothing at all, except maybe that furnace aura of aggression he always projected, smoldering deep within the rune-guarded heart of Ceramite and Sinu. He kept coming. He carried his spear formally, as if it were some kind of sacrificial totem, a curse-warded instrument for the ritual killing of beasts. The lenses in his archaic helm were black, and to look into them felt like looking into the void itself. There was a swagger in his every movement, a rolling, baleful demonstration of pure contempt. No further, I warned again, tensing to strike. In a moment, he took a step to the podium stairs. I moved. To this day, I do not know what would have happened if he had done so. I suffer neither from doubt nor from pride, and so can only speculate from the evidence I had before me. Perhaps I would have found a way. I had felled some of the greatest warriors of the enemies in my time, including many who most certainly had possessed the power to best me. But with Moloch, I cannot be sure. We were prevented from coming together in combat by the sudden split and crackle of a single teleport column streaking down from the cathedral's ruined heights. The ether vortex locked onto Raphthikian's lock signal, crashing into the nave's tortured floor, splashing against the flags of the podium, and boiling away. As I felt the rush of sudden cold, and saw the white silver energy reflect in Moloch's banished plate, I thought for a moment that Valorous had come, or perhaps Garadon, bringing with them the reinforcements we needed to fight our way out. I was to be disappointed. And there you have it guys, this excerpt really showcases the might, the intensity, and the awesome ferocity of Asterion Moloch. We see this through the eyes of Alea, which is a sister of battle, and she's no joke, like sisters of battle go out to fight against the demons of chaos, like they are the anathema to chaos, they're blanks, they're pariahs, they're nulls. And so they fight against these monstrosities, and they know, you know, these things are evil. And when she laid eyes on Asterion Moloch, she felt that intensity, that ferocity of a demon, of a beast. But she could not tell anything else. No human emotion besides content and malice could be found here. So that just adds more to the mystery and to the curiosity that is Asterion Moloch. Let me know what you guys think about this excerpt. Do you think this guy is a robot of some sort? Do you think this guy is being controlled by someone? Maybe like a puppet of the High Lords? Or is this guy just some badass? <laughs> um, the more we learn about the Minotaurs, the more we see like there, there might be some inklings of a new civil war forming in the Imperium. And um, that's not a good thing, especially considering Gilliman is trying to hold everything afloat. But things are getting harder by the day so that's all i got for today guys super bummed out that this guy is getting discontinued through forge world but maybe this end will lead to a new beginning and we get some more lore and some new sculpts for the minotaurs now here's to fingers crossed but that's all i got for today thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching if you do like what we do here at one mind syndicate a like a comment a subscribe would be greatly appreciated if you guys wanted to go the extra mile you can support us via patreon or here on YouTube through Super Thanks. And yeah, this has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.